They know us a lie. I know us a lie. You're not gonna get fired. Just tell me the truth. Spike, you're about to take Vanity Fair's Proust questionnaire. You will be asked 35 questions in rapid succession in order to reveal your true nature. Once a question has been read out, you will have five seconds to answer before we move on. Once we've completed all 35 questions, you will have a chance to reflect and even correct your answers. Ready. What is your idea of perfect happiness? Perfect happiness to me is peace and love and light in this crazy world we live in right now, particularly the United States of America. What is your greatest fear? Mm. My greatest fear has always been to not be up to snuff with what I wanted to do, whatever that particular project was. What is the trait you most deplore in yourself? I think I have very, very short fuse. And so I've had to work on myself. What is the trait you most deplore in others? I want people to be the best they can be. Which living person do you most admire? I'm not gonna answer that question. I'm not gonna put it down to one person. What is your greatest extravagance? My season tickets for the orange and blue, the New York Knickerbockers. What is your current state of mind? Right now, shit is crazy. What do you consider the most overrated virtue? Hmm, don't have an answer for that. On what occasion do you lie? Hmm, I'm not gonna answer that. What do you most dislike about your appearance? You know, I've always been at peace with uh, who I am. Which living person do you most despise? Asia Orange. What is the quality you most like in a man? Mm. Humble. What is the quality you most like in a woman? Mm. Intelligence. Which words or phrases do you most overuse? Motherfuckers. <laughs> Wait, let me ask me that question again. Which words or phrases do you most overuse? That motherfucker there. What or who is the greatest love of your life? My family. When and where were you the happiest? I'm happy when I'm family, happy when I'm on, when I'm on my set, on sets. Which talent would you most like to have? Mm, I wish I could sing. If you could change one thing about yourself, what would it be? Low tolerance for bullshit. What do you consider your greatest achievement? I will say, uh, just not myself, but my wife, our, our children. If you were to die and come back as a person or a thing, what would it be? Mm, I don't, I try not, uh, I'm not trying to put that stuff into the universe. You know, I try to be here a long, long time, many more years. Where would you most like to live? New York City. What is your most treasured possession? I got, muse I have a museum. What do you regard as the lowest depth of misery? You're about to take your last breath. What is your favorite occupation? Filmmaker. What is your most marked characteristic? I'm pigeon-toed. My gait, people recognize me by the way I walk. What do you most value in your friends? Mm, trust. Who are your favorite writers? Uh, Tony Morrison, James Baldwin, Bud Schilberg. Who is your hero of fiction? Fiction? Next question. Which historical figure do you most identify with? Well, I, maybe, maybe Malcolm X. I did the film, Denzel was Malcolm. Who are your heroes in real life? Mm, today, my heroes are the first responders, the people who, who are still keeping this thing going while we're fumbling and bumbling, getting uh, this vaccine out. People are putting their lives on the line every single day for other people so they will may so they may live what are your favorite names 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 brooklyn what is it that you most dislike hate ignorance what is your greatest regret the films i wanted to make that uh, i never got to make how would you like to die 
The Knicks better win another motherfucking world championship before I die. The last one was the 72-73 the season. That's a long motherfucking time. God damn. What is your motto? Deeds, not words. And I got that from my ancestors. Deeds, not words. Otherwise, you know, you took a whole lot of shit. But what are you really doing? Are your words backing up your actions? Thank you. That concludes the round of questions. You told us you had a very, very short fuse. When did you first recognize this within yourself? Well, my late mother, Jacqueline Lee, would tell me, you know, this is, you know, something that she saw early on as a kid. You know, I had a short fuse. And as I've gotten to my more mature years, it's something I've really worked on to not just go the fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta breathe. If you can't walk around the block. <laughs> now that's not possible all the time, especially when you're on the set. I asked about your greatest extravagance. Do you remember what you answered? Oh yeah. My season tickets for the orange and blue, the New York Knickerbockers. I've never ever considered not renewing my season subscription for the New York Knickerbockers. I like those orange and blue skies. When I asked about your appearance, you said, You know, I've always been at peace with uh, who I am. How were you able to build your self-confidence? Self-confidence you get from your parents, from your grandparents. Older people I'm talking about, older relatives tell you that you can do whatever you want. You believe that. But if you grew up in a household, well, your parents, relatives, say you ain't going to be shit. How can a young child have confidence when they're told by their parents they ain't shit and never going to be shit? So I was blessed to have parents that told me, but not only me, but my other siblings, that you could do whatever you want to do but you have to work for it. True story. Many times in public school, instead of taking notes, I was practicing my autograph. I didn't know what I was gonna do, but I knew one day I would be autographing shit. I can't find those books. I do them. My mother probably threw them out. <laughs> Your poems be getting A's, and I, what's this? She could curse. Fucking autograph. What the fuck you doing? <laughs> you said Asia Orange. Just the person you most despised. Who are you referring to? I don't call him by his real name. My brother, Buster Rhymes, came up with that nickname for him, Asia Orange. And he will go down as being on the very, very, very wrong side of history and the worst president ever spelt E-V-A-H in the history, history of the United States of America. We talked about what phrase you most overuse. Do you remember your answer? Yeah, many different uses of the word motherfuckers. Bernie Mac did it the best. And anybody wants to see it, go see Kings of Comedy. He goes in a rage on a how black people are so creative as example of our use of the word motherfucker. <laughs> genius. Bernie Mac, genius. You also mentioned you had a low tolerance for bullshit. What kind of bullshit sets you off? Well, when people just, you ask a question and they look you straight in the face and tell a lie. They know us a lie. I know us a lie. You're not going to get fired. Just tell me the truth. And, you know, and let's just make sure it doesn't happen a second time. Then you get fired. <laughs> you answered that New York City is where you most like to live. How do you feel about people who say the spirit of the city has died since the pandemic? They could keep their asses in the Hamptons. 
When asked about your most treasured possessions, you said, I have a museum. Can you tell us more about what that means? I've always felt that this office here, the world headquarters of Fort Acres and Mule here in Fort Green, Brooklyn, has been a museum. And uh, one of my prized possessions is original ANC flag signed by Winnie and Nelson Mandela to me during apartheid. You told us filmmaker. What's your favorite occupation? How has your view on filmmaking changed over the years? Well, the, the change has been that I've learned more. When I was at NYU Film School, where I met the great Ernest Dickerson, Ang Lee was our classmate, and at that time, Kurosawa was the United States promoting the film. I think it was Ron. A journalist asked Kurosawa at this time, he was in his mid-80s, and asked him, said, there must not be anything else you can learn in cinema. And Kurosawa said, there is a universe for me still to learn about cinema. So when Kurosawa said that, it was like dynamite went off in my brain. The last minute you stop learning should be the last breath that you take. My final follow-up. You told us that your greatest regret were the films I wanted to make that uh, I never got to make. Was there a particular project you had in mind when you gave us that answer? One thing I learned in this horrendous pandemic was to be still. And I began to think about what I wish could have happened. And the number one thing was uh, an epic biopic about Jackie Robinson. And uh, I went on Instagram and talked about it and then released the script too so people could read it. It wasn't meant to be. But you know what? Our dear brother Chadwick was phenomenal as, uh, as Jackie Robinson, the pride of Brooklyn. But uh, that was, that was, I mean, that was a long time ago when I wrote that script. My choice was Denzel Washington to play uh, Jackie. Denzel said he was too old. And the reason why I think the film was not made is because uh, the powers that be wanted to focus on the year of 1947, the year that Jackie Robinson, with the great help of Branch Rickey, broke the color line. People don't realize this. When Jackie Robinson came into the the National League, to play for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Every black person, I don't care where you were, we knew the enormous pressure that Jackie was under. Jackie had the whole race. Jackie Robinson had the whole race on his shoulders. And he knew shit was not set up for him to win. But with the help of Branch Rickey and some teammates, we prevailed. And and that's why I wanted I wanted to make that film. My film is not going to be about, first of all, I'm not crying about not making the film. I'm crying about what Jackie Robinson meant to me, to African Americans, and to America. And I wanted to show, I felt that to show the true story, the life, of Jackie and also his beautiful wife Rachel was still with here to was who's still with us here today. You can't do that in one year. You have to show him, you have to show his life. You have to show the transformations of how people change and what they went through. The hell they went through and the changes they made and came out being better human beings. And, and, and we all, we all 
uh, won because of that. But as you know, you know, you don't get everything you want. But that was that was uh, the biggest one. I mean, that's the first thing, you know, as I said before, I normally repeat myself, but I had a lot of time to think. Spike, do you feel that these questions have helped to reveal your true nature? That'll be left up to the person that, that looks at it. That concludes the Proust questionnaire. Thanks very much. Thank you.